profession with a special number in it makes it easier to find storage transactions and you just want to see what's the response time for a particular transaction. Are those, um, <coughs> sorry, a newbie question, on the right there, the transactions, are those just function calls, like method calls, or? Um, let me, because I don't have this, I, I, um, in, okay, it corresponds to uh, Mo Brothers scripting, uh, it's, I have anything to draw. <laughs> functions in NoRunner with their corresponding code is actually only doing one login action. And that's a transaction? But if you don't capture them or we don't group them as one transaction, NoRunner will just show you a report showing all these response time for different functions, different, uh, uh, different line of code. But if we do a, a transaction name login here, Together. And when you look at the report, you will know that, okay, no, so if I just want to see the response time for logging, it will kind of add up all these different response time for uh, different functions to show you uh, the response time for particular uh, action, user action. Did that answer your question? So you can code that? Or is that like so easy? How you program that? Like, what scripting language? Load runner is kind of close to the scripting. Yep. You, there are a lot of things that you can write your own code to do. And um, I would say in previous versions of Load Runner prior to this is 9.5, the most recent one is 11. But um, when we talk about versions like 4 or 5, um, I would say you spend 60% of your scripting time writing your own code to make things work, and only 40% or maybe less to do recall and playback. But now, with new versions of Node Runner, and close to 80% of the time, you just do recall and playback. 20% maybe just changing parameters, uh, moving wait time around, and maybe changing the name of transaction. So having said that, uh, so it is a depend it is dependent on the software programmer that if they want to club the uh, time stamps of each function into one or to have different different time stamps to view that. So it's depending upon the person or it is just a functionality of Load Runner. It's both. It's it's built in in Load Runner for. Um, allowing you to start a transaction before you record certain steps and then end it when the action is complete. And, um, and you can just write that in your code without using Load Runner as well. So most of these um, test tool, automation test tool, or performance testing test tool, uh, it gives you a nice interface to uh, do certain things but also it gives you the possibility of writing your own code to accomplish the same task. More questions about the... Let me just look, it's like my company is thinking about doing something like this. So what would be the steps? Like, is there a training program that they have that... For testing or using load, load runner? Load runner. <laughs> <laughs> so you were talking about, like, what's the step of learning load runner to do load yeah. testing? <laughs> Download the trial version. <laughs> 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 At least that's how I did it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but I'm sure HP will have some expensive courses for you too. <laughs> yeah, but um, um, <clears throat> my suggestion is if you were to learn load testing, really start with using load runner. And um, once you know how to use load runner to do, to do load testing, most of the other tools on the market, open source commercial ones, they are quite similar. <coughs> Jmeter is free. Is this quite expensive? You mean low runner is open? Well, everything from HP is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the Jmeter is free. But uh, one, not just one, but uh, for all of the open source load testing tools that I have used before, um, the major drawback is first, recording really is not good. You don't get uh, good reports from your test. And second is um, they, at least for all the ones that I have seen and used, uh, they don't use the technology of virtual users. They, uh, you record all your, let's take web app as an example, takes all, it captures all the HTTP requests and try to replay the HTTP request. Um, but that doesn't really translate to users actually, whereas if you have virtual users, then all the actions got replayed or simulated by the tool are actually just like a human being doing the same thing on the web browser. So, so the summary answer is because there's a demo that you can download, and HP is well, well used in the marketplace, there's also good help in tutorials and so forth, so start there. And then if you feel like venturing out on your own, do so with some caution about what your requirements are for the reporting, etc., etc. True, exactly. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have been searching for uh, some manual or books about low runner since maybe 2003. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, in an yeah, archive yeah, vault inside of HP. Uh, yeah, load testing is um, not like the resource out, resources out there on the web or even uh, libraries or books or they are not as uh, many as test automation. So if you talk about the tools and if you translate into load runner, you may not be able to find much help, but QTP you can find ton, tons of help. After we have um, a good design of uh, how you want to do your performance testing or load testing, then it comes to preparing the test. Um, preparing test data is quite an important aspect in uh, performance testing because um, at the end you will be simulating a large number of uh, users on any kind of system and users will be accessing, updating, changing data on the system and if you don't have enough data then things are not work. Uh, the simplest form of test data preparation will be logins of course, let's say you are trying to simulate a thousand user load onto an application then you need a thousand different logins and um, you can either use your production um, database logins and <laughs> you can reset their password and things like that. Uh, but you can also create test accounts. Uh, same as, um, let's rewind back to three slides. Remember one of the test scenarios are um, managers approving the time reports. Um, unless you already have time reports submitted by different users, the manager the managers will not have anything to, to approve. So those kind of test data you know, we need to prepare either with the help of uh, developers or DBAs who can write some SQL script to just generate tons of data or you can even use your low runner script to simulate the creation of this data. Because let's say PeopleSoft, they have people tools to allow the entities to create users. You can record your script and just use low runner to keep creating the users for 